This video is to talk about what the purpose is of this auxiliary tab or auxiliary latch or gar uh, guard locking tab. The question really is, is what is it? What is it used for and do I need it? Um, and that's what this video is going to, going to talk about. Uh, keyed mortise locks um, or generally anything that has a key or even non-keyed items that are fire rated will have this means of auxiliary, uh, auxiliary, auxiliary latch. They always will. Um, not always will. Uh, no, actually they won't always. But in order to provide an, a couple of additional features over a mortise lock, you'll have that. Those two features are going to be, first of all, this latch bolt is not guarded at all. I can easily push that latch bolt in. Think about the door in the closed and latched position. If I were to get an implement uh, onto the latch bolt, I'd be able to work that back and push the door open. But in a correct or proper function, the auxiliary latch or guard uh, deadlocking tab will be depressed. It will be pushed inside the lock case. It's done so because it makes contact with the strike plate. The latch bolt assembly will go into a hole in the strike plate. The guard locking tab does not. When that is held in, you can no longer depress that latch, which means I can't Lloyd the latch or pick the latch. Lloyding is the proper term for that. That's for the obvious advantage of not being able to Lloyd the latch, meaning just get in with a, you know, we've all seen on television the proverbial screwdriver. Um, yeah, you know, uh, uh, or a credit card, right? Um, a credit card would certainly be potential to get that open, but when that's properly engaged, it's not going to work. The other reason you have that is because of that right there. You have a UL label on this lock. This lock is listed, which means it's been tested and found in compliance and has a record on file or a listing on file with the testing laboratory. In this case, it's Underwriters Laboratory. Um, it's therefore also labeled almost all hardware on a fire rated opening and an opening is everything. The door, the frame, the hinges, the closer, the lock, the everything will either be listed, will, will most absolutely be listed, and most of the items will be labeled. So this has a label on it. If there were a question over the integrity of the fire rating of an opening, you should be able to remove all the parts or all the parts be removed for you and visually inspect to make sure that it has a label. If you ever noticed a fire, a, a door viewer approved for use on a fire door, if you remove that from the door, it will have a label on it. If it doesn't, it's not been approved, which means it's not been tested or it's been tested and failed. Steel or ferrous based hinges or stainless steel hinges don't have to have an actual label attached to them. If they're steel and they're ball bearing and they are within the proper size range appropriate for the application, um, it doesn't have to have a label, but everything else does. In a fire test, it's very likely the only way that this lock would pass or survive a three hour burn test on a door is with a guard locking tab where that latch bolt cannot get pushed in. It's very likely that without that, this would be easily, uh, the forces generated within the fire test would overcome the ability of this latch bolt to keep the door in the latched position. Uh, if you notice on exit devices, they'll have a deadlocking tab, most certainly uh, when they are fire rated. They'll also likely lack a uh, hex key or cylinder key dogging as well. Um, so this client, now that we've discussed why it's there, this video comes from the fact that I received an email from a client saying, hey, I'm finally getting to installing the lock that I bought from you, but there's something not like the original. So let's switch to the screen view and let's look at that exact information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here's the email received from the client. Uh, the client is finally getting to install the Amnia back set, which is a mortise cassette that we sold the client. And he noticed, uh, he uh, noticed a small toggle that he's referred to here above the stop work. And the button, 
or the toggle, that is indeed called the stop works. Or stop works, stop work, stop works. That my other back set, meaning his other mortise lock, did not have. It appears to interfere with the operation of the stop work and prevents allowing the latch to work. Is there a trick to installing the back set with this toggle, or should I, uh, or should it be removed to replicate the original back set? So, um, this is an Omnia mortise lock, and let's look at the original information supplied. Okay, the original door image is here. This is from the original communication with the client. Uh, yeah, you'll note that there is, uh, what you'll notice is that there's no UL label on this cassette um, on either side of the information, of the, uh, of it. Anyway, a uh, picture showing the back set, two and three quarter, uh, client just providing information. You'll see that that deadlocking tab is, is not there, and that's uh, clear and obvious. So what happened? Why did the client get this? Um, well, the bottom line is it was an, a, a, it was it is a result of the lock being misidentified originally by the source by Omnia, and the client was sold an F function, which is here. What the client has clearly is the A function, a standard entry. Latch bolt operates by knob or lever from either side when the outside trim is stopped, is locked by stop button. Oh, sorry. Latch, I, I read that and didn't make sense. Latch bolt operates by knob or lever from either side, except when you toggle the stop works, and that will disable the exterior trim. Then, in that case, you can get in with a key or the trim on the inside. Deadbolt activated by key on the outside and by turnpiece inside. So that's all really important. When the stop work is flipped, you can come and go. It's a passage set. When you throw the stop work, the only way you'll get in is with the key. Okay. You'll be able to exit when the stop work is thrown, locking the outside, because all you're doing is retracting the latch bolt. But the difference in where I believe actually the F model is a better option for the client, even though the behavior is initially different, is that when you throw the deadbolt, you cannot immediately exit. Rotating the inside trim will not retract that deadbolt, which means to exit is a two-step operation. Retract the bolt, and then exit, the, and then rotate the trim to exit. What the client was sent was latch bolt operates by knob or lever from either side, except when outside trim is locked by stop button. So that's the same functionality. Deadbolt activated by key outside and turnpiece inside. That's all the same functionality. Turning of inside knob or lever will uh, retract both the deadbolt and the latch bolt at the same time. So with the stop work, you can disable this to turn it into a passage. You can toggle the stop work to lock the outside, at which point you'll come in with the key. If you were to throw the deadbolt by either the thumb turn or the key, you can retract the deadbolt two ways, not only one. The only way you can retract the deadbolt is by turning the thumb piece. But on the F model, you can retract the, uh, the deadbolt by the thumb piece or the panic proof function of this lock rotating the trim which means in an emergency it becomes one operation to exit and not two so I would argue since the base functionality has not been is not different in terms of the stop work permitting it to act as either a um, a storeroom basically or a passage um, this is actually an improvement because I can throw the deadbolt and I can get out in one operation. This page is from the Omnia book. So, frankly, the original images were sent to Omnia because I didn't have access to this page, apparently. Um, and he should have received, he should have been sold an A function. He was sold an F function. But I would argue that there's no trouble with there being an F function. And I 
when I'm doing a new job of mortise locks, I'm always asking the client, listen, do you want to be able to exit with one step or one operation versus two? And the panic proof is the one that is, is always sold. Unless there's a situation from a lock that's 50 years old and they literally just want to duplicate that original function. And to talk a little bit further about um, that stop work functionality, let's take a look at the Schlage service manual. And I can show you in a drawing. I don't have a drawing of this Omnium material, but this is the similar function. When the auxiliary latch, which is what Schlage calls it, is pushed in or depressed, it's going to force this arm to come down. It will then act as a shoulder where this feature of the latch bolt is going to hit the face of this and this return spring is going to push that back up. So when this goes in, this profile pushes that arm down, locking that in the extended position. That's how that works. All right, let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, can you remove the guard locking tab or the auxiliary latch? You can remove it. Um, you could take the, the cover off. You could literally just pull this out, and likely the spring that goes along to it, it shouldn't cause any trouble at all. Um, although, there may not be a spring guarding governing this or you could cut it off, I suppose, but I don't see any material advantage to doing that. Um, first of all, you won't have a panic, uh, you won't have a lock body that's all but immune to being loited or shimmed or picked open, uh, shimmied open, and nor will you have a fire rated uh, uh, lock cassette anymore. And these are called cassettes. If you use your imagination and you think of a, you know, a, a regular 1980s cassette or an 8-track going into the player, it kind of sticks in. Well, a mortise body sticks into a cavity, you know, inside of the door like a tape does or a cassette does. So we'd call this a mortise cassette. Um, if you have any questions on all of that, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. The fact that the client received an F function over an A function, I don't see any disadvantage and see only advantage. There shouldn't be uh, a disadvantage um, because no operation has been changed. The client did say that it basically doesn't work the way that the old one does, but according to the description from the manufacturer, it indeed does. This just gives you an additional layer of um, safety and convenience. Safety being that it guards the latch bolt so you can't load it open. Convenience where you can exit in one operation. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.